I'm about to recap episode 12, Winners at War. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about a video that was released by CBS, uh, some footage of a bond between Kim and Sarah. So I guess you could Google Sarah and Kim bond. Um, it was released online. It's since been removed. But I think this footage might be some of the most important footage in Survivor history. I'm thinking that this conversation between Sarah and Kim better shows who people are when they play the game compared with who they are as real people than any footage I've ever seen before. So for decades, I've talked about who we players, participants, are as people. And fans and I have communicated with one another about my choices in playing the game. But this footage will enable you to take a look at who two people you're watching play now in an edited version on seasons on season 40, Winners at War, and ask yourselves whether this, this clip shows someone who you thought about in a particular way or, or, or these people now in a way you think of differently. Because uh, I think some of you will be surprised to learn that I believe even during season 40, this is footage of people being real, intimate, honest, and not playing the game. Yet they're out there playing the game. So excitedly, <laughs> I'm trying to get across that there are moments. Um, I had them with Gretchen and many other players, real, intimate, meaningful moments that occur during the filming of a Survivor season that are different, somewhat outside of. Certainly, even within that, you've got to be a little bit aware that these are real, honest feelings being released to another person against whom you're competing. But we're human. And in the midst of stresses, uh, stress is sometimes more powerful than most viewers understand when you're playing this game. The walls get let down. All you can hope is that when you choose to let those walls down on occasion, you haven't done so at your expense within the context of the game, which is totally separate from exchanges like this. In the footage between Kim and Sarah and the way in which they bonded. So I'm going to go through the, 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 the short clip and I'm going to talk about some of the comments. The original video has been removed from online but there are people who've copied and posted it. That's why you'll be able to find it Googling Kim and Sarah Bond. So I'm not going to post it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to play it now and respond to the comments so that you can see how I react to how powerful this video is. Short clip. So the video begins, obviously behind the scenes, in Fiji, out in the woods, with Kim and Sarah alone. And Kim says to Sarah, you're playing a hell of a game. And immediately Sarah is kind of open. No, nah, I'm not, she says. You can tell this is the beginning of a sincere engagement, or I can. I get the sense that it is. Obviously, I don't know what's in either one of those their heads, but as the video plays out, the emotions are so real and the comments are so relatable for me that I believe this is real footage. The kind of unedited footage that I think is what made Survivor successful and that I feel propsed 
is uh, deliberately keeping from being part of the main edit of the show Survivor and therefore, in my opinion, undermining Survivor's success, it, the, the show's level of interest. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I think people want to see as the game unfolds. I want to come play a game and not have it be personal, and it's turned into personal. And, and it will and, be and, the last 12 days. I know, just, I know, but that's what... Here's Sarah, a, 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 a powerful player, right? She won. They all won. And she says, I wanted to play a game and not have it be personal. Well, in order for her to have won the game she did play, she had to play it in an impersonal way. Yet the blowback, the repercussions, even though she was voted the winner for her having played it so impersonally, have scarred her. And that's something that you'll hear about. The blowback from her time on Game Changers was so impactful to her that she didn't even, she even considered not coming back for 40. Whew. I'm sit and like I got such a bad rap for that. You know what I mean? And truthfully, here I want to say this to you because it's true. You have PTSD from your last experience. I did. Mm -hmm. That was seven years ago. It's still hard for me. I remember how I felt. I felt like a bad person. Right. And I'm not. Wow. Here's Kim telling Sarah that Kim thinks Sarah has PTSD from her last appearance, and then saying. Because I did too. Kim did too. Kim thinks she had PTSD from the, from the time that she won Survivor. And then, follow this. She says, I felt like a bad person. And I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. This is a real struggle. This is... This is those words communicate something I have uh, really tried hard to help fans understand about Jerry Manthe, about myself, about anyone who plays the game. The edit presents a participant, a, a player of the game of Survivor, in whatever way suits a particular narrative for a very restic restricted time frame. So is the footage real? Yes. Is the edit honest? Yes. But it is such a tiny part of who a person is that viewers, when the edit isn't sufficient, lose sight of, the, the, of more of who that player is that they're intrigued by or following or, or uh, rooting for or rooting to be destroyed. Either way. But the idea of Kim... Think about the Kim, who she is, and the way you see her, and so calmly playing the game. She did have some emotion expressed early in um, this season 40. And Sarah, too. She had been um, uh, confident in her alliance with Tony and playing pretty powerfully, pretty strong. But as I'll talk about in my recap of, C of uh, episode 12, her, her emotions... I think get the best of her a little bit. And even though they're with Tony, they're expressed, um, communicated to Tony, I think they're a little raw for this game. I think even though he's her partner and she trusts him in that way that, you know, Cops R Us can do, I still think it would have been important for her to kind of wrestle uh, ahead of time with how um, she was struck emotionally by his choices before engaging him in the context of the game. But again, this is outside the game. This is clearly them washing a shirt, talking in real ways about the way these women and their lives have been affected. And I want viewers to understand that these people are awesome game players and that it isn't easy to do what I've been 
uh, challenging everybody to do for 20 years, which is to separate the outside the game life and your emotions and the ways in which you engage people from what needs to be done in Survivor, but that that's only step one. Because even if you're able to do that, there is backlash when you leave the show, when it airs, and you have to be willing and able to accept that viewers just may never know almost anything about you, never mind all about you. Oh, I love it. This is Survivor. This is Survivor's impact on our lives. This is the culture of America in the past 20 years, <laughs> since from 2000 on. This is an important, important clip, I think. We all signed up to come do this, you know? We I all signed up to come do this. I Sarah. She was one of the people that I thought I would like to see gone first. She's such a hustler. Okay, did you hear that? We all came out here to do this. And then she says, I came out here not trusting Sarah. Here is Kim, one of the people who's had the experience that we're talking about here, having to play the game hard, but having repercussions afterwards and feeling because of the way people treated her like a bad person because of the things that she had to do. And yet even she came to season 40 thinking that she was going to encounter a person in Sarah whom she may not like, wouldn't trust, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's powerful. People get an idea of who people are and that they lock it in their head and can't stay open to new data or facts or can't observe different aspects of that person and integrate it into their perspective of that person's personality. So Kim had to readjust. She got out there. Here she was thinking Sarah was somebody not to trust in the way that Kim didn't like to be thought of as a bad person and had to rethink that, had to realize that the impact of a winner of Survivor watching Survivor was that she was somewhat taken in by the edit as well. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. And now here they are being real out there in the midst of the game and adapting, adapting. But that human spirit, that kindness, that goodness, they're, all, they're both good people. Most people who play Survivor are really good people. I won't say all because, you know, we're not all good people, we humans, but most are. And when we get out there and we play hard, most people, when they leave the game, recognize that and can understand that that was what was there to happen. I'm going to talk about Sarah having made a real misstep with respect to that in my recap this week. She's such a hard player. I've watched her lie to people. You know, she's really good at deceiving. But as moms, as friends, you know, we started to develop this friendship. And Sarah had a really traumatic experience the season she won, you know, and I think people made her feel like a terrible person. And I think she's carried that ever since. I think it's heavy on her. And I hope for her that this will be a different experience. You know, and we're out here playing this game, which sometimes gets nasty and nobody feels great about that part of it. <laughs> The, the game sometimes does get nasty, but it needn't. And oftentimes the nastiness is gameplay. Oftentimes a bad player will react, overreact, I think, emotionally, and be nasty towards someone. And it's the bad player's emotions, or often a bad player's efforts to kind of influence somebody. I think there are far better ways, usually, than to be a bully and a and make comments that are kind of outside the game, etc. You could argue either way that that's, hey, anybody can play however they want. I agree. I just am judging the, the skillfulness or the appropriateness uh, or the effectiveness of choosing to play that way. And so when Kim says sometimes it gets nasty out here, it's usually a result of bad survivor play. And the good player 
the Kim, if she's playing really well, has to recognize that it gets nasty out here. That doesn't mean she's nasty, and that doesn't mean that the game of good players is played nastily. When you, when you see people in season 40, when you're seeing Ben explode, and when you see these emotions that are raw and um, seem inappropriate, that's because they are. <laughs> and if they seem appropriate to you, I understand why. Because they would be natural reactions to being undermined by someone in real life in the ways that players un try to undermine one another in the game of Survivor. But part of the success with playing Survivor has to do with your ability to recognize that others' efforts to undermine you in the game should not be taken personally. That you have to objectively look at those efforts and ascertain how effectively that person is playing you, undermining you or others, and then decide how you're going to move forward from there. Which hopefully will not include over-the-top emotional expressions that undermine your chances of success even more. Why? It is a complicated game, as I've said all along, but I'm so happy this footage exists to help in real time, while the season is playing, viewers who want to take a real look at the difference between who people are and who the players are edited to be within the context of the game. Uh, these are good people out here. All of them. To have somebody reminding you this is a game and you're not a bad person, that's rare. I just try to like protect everybody and yeah, I can't. Yeah. And that's where it's like, no, really, that's too it, much. Like that's too heavy for you. Sarah saying, I just try to protect everybody. That's part of the Cops Are Us. She's genuine. She's caring. She's loving. She wants to protect everybody. That's not possible in a game where you have to get rid of everyone. Right? And I think on, on the most important level, Sarah gets it. But here and in last night's episode, we're seeing a crack in Sarah's skill with respect to the game. Because the truth is, gearing yourself up to... Be prepared to not protect everybody is a big, big part of being ready to play this game well. You're responsible for you. You're actually the only one that you can be responsible for. You're such a sensitive and kind person. <laughs> like, everyone out here who knows you knows that. When I won game... Being a sensitive and kind person is a good thing. Don't let it be a liability. Being that sensitive and kind person is wonderful. It keeps you aware. Your, your empathetic skills, your ability to have empathy and sympathy and all of the parts that make you sensitive are what you can use to play the game well. But you can't allow that sensitivity to exceed the limits associated with playing well. You have to be able to stop it and allow others to be impacted negatively by your choices. It's just part of the game. After the game is over, you can talk all you want with those people about the ways you felt seeing them do something or having to do something yourself that you felt was eh, yucky or um, hurt somebody, uh, not physically, but it hurt their chances in the game. And there are few uh, players of Survivor, because most are rational enough, who will think that you're not being real when the game is over, or think that you're not justified in having done what you needed to do to win the game. Oof. Rangers, everybody voted for me because they felt that I played the best game. 
but the jurors took it very personal. And that's why I struggled with wanting to come back and play because you walk away just not feeling like a good person. I didn't want to go through that again. So I completely broke down saying, what am I doing out here? But Kim said, hey, you are a good person. You can do this. Just believe in yourself. You are a good person. You can do this. Just believe in yourself. And the truth is when Sarah walked away uh, from Game Changers and the jurors, she thinks, took it personally, I'm not sure how true that is. And if it is true that they took it personally, it isn't Sarah's responsibility to shoulder the burden of someone on the jury taking Sarah's skillful play, her gameplay, personally. That is that juror's failure to, res be, take, to take responsibility for their choices to play a game called Survivor in which other people would try to undermine their successes to win. Think about this logically. What would it look like if after winning a football game, the most valuable player cried and felt horrible about having to block or uh, throw a, a ball past someone else who was playing the game. You're probably like shaking your head. What? You're not even making sense. You, th there is no sense to that. The football players come in knowing that they need to knock the other players out of the way in whatever ways they can. Well, Survivor is more similar than most people realize. And all of the players coming into it, like all football players on both teams, recognize that they could get hurt in the process. But this is an emotional game and people don't have sufficient control over their emotions, which makes Survivor astounding, which is the, the, the biggest part when we see the realness of, of the interactions of Survivor participants. The biggest part of the game, uh, that it, the, uh, of the longevity of the game, of why we continue to watch it. Of course, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. And she freed me to be able to continue to play hard because this is season 40 and it deserves to have good players in it. And the only way you can be a good player is if you're willing to play the game. And the game is lie, cheat, steal, do whatever you have to do to get to the end and win. So that's what I have to do. So there, you heard it right from Sarah's mouth. Whatever you need to do. And Kim, you know, supporting her emotionally. You're a good person. You can do it. Gives Sarah the impetus and the energy to go get, get back into it and, 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 and play it hard. But as we see in episode 12, Sarah can't. And I'll talk about that in that recap. You know, 80% of you who are listening to these videos have not subscribed to my channel. Please subscribe. Just hit the subscription button and hit the notification button and you'll be informed when I have another video up for you to listen to. After you've subscribed, comment. Comment positively, comment negatively. No holds barred. Just say what you're thinking. That's what will make our exchange even more valuable. As I'm able, I'll create new videos responsive to that commentary. So like away or dislike, on that rare occasion, you may feel the need to do so. <laughs> but either way, thank you.